Greetings, a warm and enthusiastic welcome to all. The following video, presented by Earthkeeper, is intended to teach enthusiasts of five Vogel crystals how to clear, activate, care for, and effectively use five Vogel crystals. Included is a remarkable 45 minute teaching from Dr. Marcel Vogel himself teaching the therapeutic techniques of working with five Vogel crystals, as well as a valuable teaching from James Dibron on caring for five crystals. James Dibron is a geologist and gemologist with extensive knowledge of crystals, especially five Vogel crystals. Dr. Vogel begins immediately after Dibron. Enjoy, and namaste. The teachings from James Tiberon. The following is a brief insertion from James Tiberon. Much of the processes described were Metatron guided and inspired. Other portions were learned directly by the author through experiences of working with crystals for over 40 years. James Tiberon is a geologist and gemologist, and crystal expert and intuitive. About Phi Crystals, written by James Tiberon. Caring for Five Ogles Treat your Five Ogle with great attention and care. Do's and Don'ts 1. Do spend time with your Five Crystal. In order to activate it, you must insert your love and energy into the crystal. 2. Never touch the front forward tip. It is very fragile. Quartz has a very high fracture gradient and cleavage potential. 3. Do not place or immerse your Phi crystal in water to clear it. If the water is of a significantly different temperature than the crystal, either colder or warmer, it can cause either rapid contraction or expansion of the quartz and result in fissure cracking, creating inclusions. 4. Do not clear Phi crystals with salt or salt water. 5. Do not use crystal bowls or Tibetan bowls near the quartz. The high-pitched sounds can induce cracking. 6. The best way to clear the Phi crystal is by soul breathing. Hold the crystal firmly. Shake it vigorously. Take a deep breath and blow energetically onto the crystal three times with the intent of clearing. 7. Optionally, the Phi crystal can be cleared by smudging with white sage. Circle the crystal three times with the sage smoke. 8. As with all personal crystals, be very discerning of allowing others to handle them. You may wish to reserve use of the Phi crystal for yourself only. Any time another touches it, their energy can be absorbed onto the crystal. Phi crystal activation process. Initially stroke the crystal with the fingers and upshift your vibration with the infinity breath for about five minutes. Infinity breathing is done by an inhalation of eight counts and an exhalation with eight counts, with both inhale and exhale all through the nasal passage. After five minutes, then vocally tone the ohm sound. As you tone, visually open every chakra beginning with the crown down to the root and then back up to the heart. It is important to be in a higher state when working with five ogles. Send love directly from the heart chakra and visualize it filling the crystal with emerald green light. Ask the crystal to acknowledge you and sense the response. My trigger is usually a warming of the crystal. It will feel warm in my hands. When I am working with a new five ogle, and I have a set of 12, the warming can initially take up to 30 minutes or more. Once I am merged into the third meld with the crystal, it takes only a few minutes 
sometimes just seconds. The second trigger that the crystal is ready is usually as an energy pulse from the crystal that you will recognize as an energy dynamic, or it may feel as a tingling sensation running up the arm into the spine and heart, or as simply a mental knowing or deep intuitive sense or signal of understanding, a responsive flash to you from the sentience of the crystal. This will vary with each person. Spend at least three weeks doing this for a period of not less than 20 to 30 minutes per day or until the energy reaction is sent back to you and recognized. Visualize and build a field of green energy that encompasses your auric field. In my personal experience, I often see swirling geometric shapes with eyes closed when the phi crystal has triggered to the pineal to open. At this point, the experience can take one of several paths. The experience can be one of a visual soiree into past or future lives, one of encountering teachers, or one of specific tasks such as healing or creating a benevolent thought form. Creating Healing Thought Forms And so, as mentioned, the other color variances for me are usually defined by my use of the session, meaning that if I am using one of my vowels to create a manifestation thought form, I will sort of consciously follow a procedure guided to me intuitively to form a golden bubble and place in that bubble a scripted message of a few words to initiate the imagery. For example, if I am focusing on offering a healing, I will see the words highest good, highest healing floating inside a golden sphere bubble. Then I will see the image of the person the healing is intended for inside the sphere. Then I send love and healing through my hands into the base of the crystal and visualize a beam of emerald green light going into the sphere. When it is visually full, which I imagine, then I send the bubble to the receiving party's heart chakra. I always make sure I have the other person's approval before sending this energy, and that is important. I use five Vogels for specific goals being able to get creative energies for my books, channels, etc. When Anne and I led Earthkeeper pilgrimages, we worked together to visualize the goals and intent of the journey. I should also note, there are also sessions with five Vogels that occur when I meditate that I do not consciously direct, and in these there is that trust that what is opening is for one's highest good, led by spirit or higher self. These often take one on journeys to past lives or to other realities, into lucid dream states, or to master teachers. In these I see a totally different type of color, bright colors, and often a deep intense white light, as if going through a tunnel, and at times you may have to work at remaining lucid, as it's easy to lapse into a sleep state and have a dream that evaporates from conscious mind memory after waking. But by remaining focused, incredible visionary experiences, either glimpses of past, future lives, or interfacing with teachers, can occur. I have met with my oversoul, Tiburon, of the Pleiades, many times in this way, and also with the benevolent Syrians and Pleiadians, as well as Lord Ganesh. Tiburon of the Pleiades incarnated into Atlantis and worked with the Law of One Temple Crystals for long lifetimes, per the Metatron readings. And much knowledge on crystals is received directly from those lifetimes. It is why, per Metatron, I chose to be born in Arkansas with the quartz crystal fields, and then moved to Brazil after completing my studies at the University of Arkansas. I lived in Brazil for seven years. Arkansas and Brazil are the largest deposit of quartz crystal on the planet. It is interesting how different cuts of phi crystals seem to offer differing experiences in the undirected, more spontaneous visions. Keep in mind, these are my experiences and modalities, and these can and will differ somewhat for each diligent seeker. In all sincerity, Phi crystals are remarkable tools of thought amplification and interdimensional access. The great Edgar Cayce provided an interesting series of readings regarding the quartz crystals of the Law of One in Atlantis. 
the Casey reading states clearly that the crystals were used to communicate with the infinite, with masters from outside our universe. May you be blessed. Namaste. James Tiburon And now, James Tiburon, and 2018, Earthkeeper Stargate videos, are very pleased to present the rare, original video, of avant-garde crystal master, Dr. Marcel Vogel. This sound, and color-enhanced vintage video, thoroughly reviews the purposes, and therapeutic uses and guidelines for five Vogel crystals, taught by the amazing visionary, and utterly brilliant scientist, Dr. Marcel Vogel himself. Enjoy! And Namaste! Utilization of crystal forms as a therapeutic agent. That is my purpose of being with you. I will share with you what I know now. I want, to the best of my ability, to cut away mysticism and replace mysticism with knowledge. With knowledge, then fear leaves and you can deal with what you are doing in a loving way. I'd like to start the work today tomorrow and the day after tomorrow with a meditation, with the quieting of our mind and the playing of music, so that we can fill our body with sound, we can release what we have experienced coming here and setting ourselves in place and opening our mind to preparing to understand what I am sharing with you. As a theme for meditation, I'd like to give you the words of Wilhelm Oswald, a great German scientist who is the father of the theories of color. He was a chemist, a brilliant philosopher. He learned how to live life fully. His equation is the following. Equation. Leading. Equa what? G Leading. Leading. I'm just translating. G equals a running out of ink minus W. And what that says is is Glück <coughs> gleich Arbeit weniger Widerstand. Glück is happiness. It is equal to work, arbeit, minus resistance. And this is what I'm going to try to share with you these days is to give you the information with minimum resistance. And in accordance with that, we can deal with this knowledge in a joyful, happy, cheerful way. Not trying to drive home or sell you an argument that we be fooled on. <laughs> 
take it in for yourself what I'm saying, test it, evaluate it. Come back and critique with me. You've got me here for three days, and the more you hit me, the more I will enjoy it. I'll come back twice as hard. <laughs> this type of dialogue, the testing by fire, is the way real knowledge takes place. This is the way I work in the laboratory. I'll take an idea, treat it like a child, and become joyful, happy. But the moment I step into the laboratory, as this will be these three days, this is our laboratory, we then must test, critique, and remove the resistance of doubt by experience and understanding. So that is the thing. So we were going to work, work together, remove as much as possible the resistance to the understanding of what we are doing. And through that, we come to a feeling of joy, happiness, and unfolding. Now, Kurt, let's have a meditation. And we will work with my little baby here, 13 sided meditation systems. We'll start by sitting up straight, coupling your legs. Breathe in and out. Breathe in. Close your eyes, visualize the crystal, and let your breath out into the crystal. Become one now with the crystal. Feel the vibration of the beauty, the pattern, the force that a crystallographic form has. <clears throat> Let us start now to breathe together. Breathe in and out. With each indwelling breath, release the tension that is in your body and bring it to a sense of peace and harmony. Breathe in. Out. Breathe in. Peace be to you. And out. Now create in your mind the reason, the purpose of your being here. What you want to know, to experience, to bring from here and put into practice.
What resistance do I have now in my body that I wish to release? percentage 
or increase the percentage by evaporating the water, these molecules of silicon dioxide associate together, and as they get to a critical dimension, they link and form a unit cell which is hexagonal in shape. This unit cell <coughs> is the memory unit on which now a crystal will grow. If you do not have that, you cannot get a single crystal. You'll get a precipitation of an amorphous mass, a gel. You take silica, you dissolve it in water by heating it, and you let the water evaporate. You have jelly, a silica gel. Now what that represents are these units of silicon dioxide which link together in random shape. They are not cohesive, they are random, and they therefore have no bond forces holding them together. And so you can stick your finger in the jelly and it's like jelly. It has no strength to it. Now, you take this same silica gel, bring it back into solution, and you cool it slowly, and suddenly out of that solution will precipitate minute crystals. And if you capture one of these crystals, it'll be exactly like this. That is called a seed crystal. What you have done by slowly cooling and having the right concentration, <coughs> you've allowed these molecules of silica in solution to fit together and suddenly find the right combination that they link and form this hexagonal structure. And once you can get that structure, you then have the nucleating site or memory unit on which now crystals can grow. The remarkable thing that we found in our laboratory, we have found, I'm making a big bridge right now, but I want to give it to you at this moment. <clears throat> These type of crystals which you have are memory units. These are composited of millions and millions of these unit cells. And as a consequence, your energy, my energy, can go into this. I can program with my mind a crystal. And what I did, I put the thought of nucleating silica, so it would crystallize out of solution properly. So I took and put that into a holder, a special holder we made, and spun water around it, which contained a very dilute solution of silica. And then I took a drop of that, put it under the slide, on a slide, and watched it in the microscope. In comparison to the same solution, that had not been treated by my mind. The one that I focused my mind on came out in beautiful needles of silica, single crystals of silica, only a few microns long, but perfect. The other, so the other side was just a jelly 
amorphous without order. The implication, please, implication, your mind, your thoughts can enter matter and order it. Bring a systematic ordering like this into being. And I have done it. It is a most thrilling thing to experience. <coughs> You can take from random order and by focused attention bring a systematic ordering into being. And that is why we're here. That's what I have given my time to come here to be with you, is to learn how to put in systematic order the patterns of life within you so that you start to form and act in a regular systematic array. You have a seed crystal. You take this seed and put it back in a little string into the solution and then again you cool it. But now as that solution flows around that seed. It has a reference electrode to work from. It has a informational source to know what to do. And so each one of these molecules start to link onto that and they go face by face by face. And they just keep expanding. And they grow layer by layer. And as that expands, you see exactly these angles as you see here. These are called the faces. The end of the crystal is called a termination. Though so this crystal started here and it became confused when it was first growing and that gives you that whitish color as you see because the crystal planes grew in random orientation. And so when you see it, you see the random orientation here. And finally, they locked in place and started to grow symmetrically and systematically. And that gives you this beautiful, clear, single crystal. In nature, a solution of silica in water is dripped down from a cave, this was attached here, and it flowed over this, and then it extracted it, and it built and built, and it decided now to stop here, and it called now a termination. It says that is enough of growth for this, and I will now finish my growth in life. There is a livingness to a crystal when it grows. You can feel the dynamic vibration to a crystal. And then it starts to take this face and just terminate it because it steps one step, one crystal unit at a time inward until it terminates here. You go this face, it comes here and it terminates here. Go this face here and it terminates here. These angles, every one of them are exactly the same. You take a goniometer or you can take a piece of cardboard, cut it out, and you'll find that each one of these angles are exactly the same. They're symmetrical. The symmetry, then, that you see indicates that there is a symmetrical plan from which these things have accreted from and have grown. This is the termination of the crystal. Now, the crystal, when it grows like this, has an option. It can grow left-handed, turning around left-handed spiral, or it can grow a right-handed spiral. Which means, when these unit cells <coughs> they can start here and they can start to spiral around in this way because all crystals grow in spirals. 
all of them. There is a vision to them. Because you see, when you have this in space, a one unit cell, it prepares for the next growth for organizing these random molecules in space here, and then they lock step in and they start to grow around. A crystal, when it grows, absorbs the vibrations of the forces that exist in and around it. So, a natural crystal is a perfect storage library of the geologic forces that have existed throughout its time of growth. It reflects in the internal symmetry of this crystal the forces of nature that were there at that time. Consequently, those who work with natural crystals, I call this a natural crystal that has been taken right from nature and are not cognizant of this or aware of it, will induce in their body the effect of all of these geological imprinting forces. <clears throat> These are big, important statements. Also including the, the blow when they put it out of the... Oh, well, I haven't come to that yet. Please, Curtis, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I... But, you see, what I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing it step by step. That means, in the exact way the crystal grows, and above all what we call the space lattice group imperfections, the lattice site imperfection. So when a crystal lattice grows, it will suddenly skip, and that skip forms what you call a slip plane. It will grow imperfectly. It is reflecting in its growth a change <coughs> or a force that existed in nature there. We go deeper. A crystal now, after it has grown this way, can also reflect the magnetic and, above all, the forces of nuclear radiation. Radiation effects, gamma, alpha, and the like. Gamma radiation, x-rays, <coughs> when they will strike on a quartz crystal like this, will cause a silica atom to be displaced from its lattice site, pushed up, and it creates then a negative ion vacancy. So there is a hole in <coughs> space created by the radiation. That hole then will absorb light. And you see then a smoky crystal or the smoky quartz. An idea came to me last year at Munich when I spoke to some of you who were here about helping the people who have been exposed to Chernobyl. I got a source of a mine of smoky quartz I tested this, and I found that when I took natural smoky quartz, placed a radioactive source on it, the energy, the radioactive emanations were stored in the crystal. I could measure that radiation with a Geiger counter 
And now I got an inspiration. I said, could I erase that radiation, release it from its lattice line? What I did, I have an omega-5 measuring instrument to measure the forces that are within a crystal. I put that into the well, measured the field that was in there. I have on the other side a ability to do color therapy. I put then the crystal that was exposed to radiation in there and then exposed the crystal to red light, around 6,000 angstrom units, deep red. The moment I shone the red light onto that crystal, there was an abrupt release of energy. No longer could I detect any radiation in the crystal. When I checked it with a Geiger counter, it was clear. So I had a storage device that could soak up radioactive emanation and release it with red light. The start of a device a safety device that you and I can wear to protect ourselves from radiation. Now I have a source, a mine we found in California. I was there personally. I helped get these crystals. I have about two to three hundred pounds of the crystal in my laboratory now. Next step. We're talking now, first, the forces of nature modifying the growth of a crystal. We're talking the next step, the forces of radiation, X-rays, gamma rays, nuclear forces. Now we'll talk on mechanical forces. In other words, a miner seeing this crystal and taking his hammer and hitting this affects every lattice site and creates a disturbance in that crystal which held in the hands of a sensitive person you can feel. <coughs> I have had crystals which were beautiful were just a beautiful single crystal. But a miner had taken and with a sledgehammer and had knocked it from the side of a cave and that blow created havoc inside the crystal. Still holds. Now what can you do about that? <coughs> Crystals in order for you and I to use them, must be purified. They must be released from all negative radiation. They must be released from all patterns of thought. They must be released from all stresses applied by the act of mining or getting them. We, in our laboratory, take a crystal like this and end up with a form that you see here. A four-sided healing crystal. We do this with diamond saws and diamond laps, and above all, with love. We sing as we cut these crystals. We give music to the crystal as we're finishing and cutting it. Because we want to turn this from something like this into an instrument of service and use for mankind. To 
clear in crystal from the patterns of thought, the emotions, the tension, the stresses that have been imposed on it, including and above all, the stress of the tearing away from its root here or the blow of a hammer, can be done in a remarkably simple way. The healing force is love. Because the definition in my mind of love is that force which coheres matter. It brings the matter together in a way that it was designed to be. It heals. So a crystal, when it is first to be used, must be healed. And so the act of healing is to hold a crystal like this between this finger or this finger. You'll see me mentioning either one of them. Now when you hold it this way, be careful on some of these, the tips are very, very sharp. So I would recommend that you start by holding it this way. So with a pair of faces, you hold it here, and you take then the other tip, tips, hold it here, draw your breath in, create an image of well-being and love, and just pulse your breath. That's all there is to it. Go to the next pair of faces, pulse your breath. The crystal now is clear. The stresses, tensions from the moment of its birth, all the struggles that it has gone through has now been released. It is healed, ready for you to work with and to use. You can check this out as I have. I don't have my laboratory here. Probably the next time I come, you will have further instrumentation. The Omega and other equipment where you can see the tremendous change that takes place in this crystal. The moment you put the thought of love and well-being into it. You've emptied the crystal of a charge by creating two oscillating fields, one going in this direction, the other going in this direction. Now the moment you empty crystal of the charge, the next step you want to do is to fill it. So you fill by holding it in your hand the way I have now. Forefinger here, thumb and the middle finger here. Hold, see how I have it? Draw my breath in. Tune to the crystal. As I fill my breath, I keep filling and filling and filling. I'm still drawing my breath in as I'm talking to you. So this whole upper cavity, you want to fill, not the stomach. It's a four-step level to breath, and we'll cover that tomorrow. You start here on the diaphragm. You start filling here until you fill these outer cavities, and this is where the power comes, right here, here and here. Once that is in, watch. See, notice I went up, my body went up and it went down. I impacted a power, a force. I just did it. It was not. It was a whole vital transfer of charge. You follow? Once the crystal is filled, it's yours now. Now it becomes personal. Now it is you. And truly you. Your signature, your life signature is in this crystal. It is a dynamic, living activity or representation of the activities going on <coughs> and around your subtle body. 
It is more than that. You can study yourself at all levels of consciousness through this crystal now. The impact, the statements I am making to you are enormous. I cannot finish in my lifetime the doors that I see opening from a systematic study of these words I'm giving now to you. I cannot, and I will not open too many doors for my son. I want to do a few well and lay a solid ground and then pass it on to the next generation. We have needed an instrument to study ourself. Man, in his human body, is continually, dynamically changing. You're changing. Every movement of your mouth creates a change in there. So how can I study you? I would have to develop a dynamic instrument to study you. You follow me? Mm -hmm. and now if I want to study now your brainwave activity, I put electrodes on with electrode paste, take it to an electrode and cephalograph, look at the alpha, the beta, the theta wave, or delta wave activities. But I'm only getting this point, you follow me? Mm -hmm. This electrode and this electrode, through this electrode material into this equipment. I'm not getting the whole picture. I want to study the auric activity of my body. So I take a galvanic skin response machine called GSR. It measures the change in electrical resistance in the tissue here. But I'm measuring this, and that's all. See, the real problem, it is so completely, severely limited. I want to measure the activity of the heart. So I use what we call a blood plethysmograph. So I take a finger here and I wrap it up and I have a little light emitting diode and I measure the activity of my heart here. But it's not here. Do you follow what I'm saying to you? But with this crystal, done with exactly what I have said to you, I can get a dynamic, vital measurement of you, your entire being, be it a physical activity, be it an emotional activity, be it a mental activity, or a spiritual activity. You have an entire laboratory contained in here of you. It's that deep. And I'm saying to you, to you, each one of you, more information than I've ever passed on in the United States. That is my way of showing respect to you and to Kurt. Because I have prayed from the day I have started this technology almost 14 years ago that I would find men and women who have the integrity of mind, heart, and soul to approach this with a systematic, rigorous way. Because what you can do with this is extreme good or unbelievable harm. I cannot be more solid in what I am saying. Yes? I mean, I, I'm totally sincere in this. To such an extent that when I started this technology and I saw the impact of what you can do even with a natural crystal. I threw it away. The crystals disappeared on me. 
And I said, I want nothing to do with this. I was given a crystal again. Again, I rejected it. And then finally, I said, all right, I will do this technology provided I be given the means of ensuring that no serious harm will come from this technology to mankind again. So what I do, my friends, into every crystal that we make, I put a safety valve in the crystal. If you abuse the crystal in a negative way, it will shatter. The tip will pop off, and if you really fool around, it will crack right in half. And that is my protection for the good of mankind. It's that serious and I'm that sincere in what I am saying to you. <clears throat> the effects of what you can do with a crystal like this would frighten most people. But there's nothing to fear when you act in a loving, sincere way. Because you're working for the good of the person and not for your control or manipulation over them. <clears throat> yes? Uh, are you the only person who can make <laughs> Right now on Earth, my yes. Yeah, Dr. Laskow, who I train, he's a medical doctor. He was with me for over three and a half, four years. He decided to go on his own. He has a man cutting crystals for him without my knowledge. I just let him go. But can you control him? I won't control anyone. I just let him go. You see, I have. I will be sharing information with you that I, as I said, I've given to no one before. What I call core information, root information. The implication behind my words is tremendous. When you watch the tape, when you listen to the audio tapes, you'll see the depth to which I've had to go in thinking. I pray each morning for guidance. I work with all the power and the strength of the technical and scientific training that God has given me throughout my lifetime. I am a material scientist. I was with IBM for 27 years in the material science department working in <laughs> the study of magnetism, of phosphorus, of liquid crystals. I've put intensive technical scientific study on the forces of nature. But these are like, my friends, toys. Please, like toys compared to what you can do with this. I cannot be more sincere. You see what I mean? I'll give you an example right now. In fact, I will never do it again. I was in England invited by Sir John Whitmer to the May lectures. I went on for a number of years. And that was in 1974 or 5. 75. I had done many, many years of work on man-plant communication. Using a plant as a transducer for the forces of mind. I was approached by psychics to have me subject myself to hypnotic 
treatment by uh, Ali, uh, Andrea Poharic. And I said, no, there was no necessity. I do not want it. And these girls came at me again and again during the interim periods as we were going through the meeting. <clears throat> Finally, it was my turn to lecture. And I gave the lecture on the plant experiments, and then we went into the main rooms, about 150 people, for a demonstration on the working with a plant in using it as a transducer. Now, to use this, I must go with my mind into the plant by drawing my breath in. And the moment I draw my breath in, I'm totally vulnerable to everybody around because my aura <coughs> is pulled in down to a very, very thin envelope, and a person who has psychic ability or knowledge can go into my auric field and attach, just like a, a, an insect or a beetle. Well, Andrea Poharic was in my left-hand side. The other girl was where, like where you are right now, and the third girl was on my right, so they had triangulation on me. <clears throat> I stood there, drew my breath in, and as soon as I drew my breath in, I was hit with a blow, right here in the chest. And my chest caved in. It's just like it took a big iron clamp and squeezed you. I couldn't breathe. I stood there, and I held my breath. I've learned pranayama. I've practiced it now for many, many years, which means holding breath. This man does it also. <laughs> and I waited till my body, I felt the equilibrium coming back in, then I could let my breath out and catch a small breath, but I had only a fragment of my original breath. I said, I must call a halt to the meeting. I'm not feeling well. Two women like you, or just about the distance you were, saw what happened to me. They were healers. 